You know, in clinical medicine, we use imaging tools for one of two reasons, either to support a diagnosis or to help give insights into patients' prognosis. Can you help us understand the use of left ventricular strain and dilated cardiomyopathy for both diagnosis and prognosis? Yeah, clearly. So let's start with prognosis. And as we are all aware of, EF has limited prognostic value. You can see on this nice study that patients with a very low EF have a very bad prognosis, but this correlation is not clear in patients with only mildly reduced or normal ejection fraction. So really what you're saying then is that if the EF is low, they have a poor prognosis, but if the ejection fraction is normal and they may have the clinical syndrome of heart failure, the variability of EF doesn't provide that much prognostic information? Correct, and I'm going to show you that strain is more robust and has not such a high variation and correlates clearly with mortality. So I'm going to show you this patient and this patient as you can see has a dilated left ventricle. You can see all three apical views. You can see that the global longitudinal strain is decreased. It's only minus eight percent in this patient. So what does this information of reduced strain, of reduced GLS help? There was a recent study and they have looked at survival rates in outpatients with chronic heart failure. And you can see concerning survival, the patients with a low strain, less than minus 10%, they have a very bad prognosis, and those with a better strain have a better prognosis. But it's not only about survival, it's also predictive of hospitalization for acute decompensated heart failure. So we can use this technology to get an impression of the overall risk of our patients.